Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum I welcome my dear brothers and sisters in al-Islam to another episode of the prophetic timeline An insight into the seerah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya ba ya insha'Allah Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, why are we talking about the seerah? We want to increase our love for the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to love him, we need to know him. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, he was the final messenger. He was the best man who walked the face of this earth. We want to know what exactly happened in his life, but in a summarized fashion, Ya by Ya Insha'Allah. The year 11 into prophethood during Hajj, there were six individuals who were rather interested in Al-Islam and they were from Medina Al-Munawwara and that begins the interaction with the people from Medina Al-Munawwara in the year 12 after prophethood the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was taken on the journey of Isra and Mi'raj and in that same year brothers and sisters the Hajj during the time of Hajj the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam meets with 12 individuals from Medina Al-Munawwara and they all embrace Al-Islam and they pledge allegiance to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that's Bay'atul Aqaba Al-Ula the first pledge of allegiance and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he sends Mus'ab Ibn Umair with them to go back to Medina Al-Munawwara and to be their teacher the following year Ya Abdullah Ya Amat Allah the year 13 into prophethood the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at Hajj not only 12 does he meet but rather 70 individuals he meets from Medina Al-Munawwara and this is when the Bay'atul Aqaba Athaniya occurs the second Bay'atul Aqaba occurs here from amongst these 70 there are 12 people who are chosen they are the 12 Nuqaba the 12 like leaders the leaders and they are the Nuqaba then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave general permission to people to migrate to Medina Al-Munawwara previously they were migrating to Abyssinia. Now permission is given to migrate to Medina Al-Munawwara and many of them left. Umar radiallahu ta'ala and left for Medina Al-Munawwara and others. But Abu Bakr and Ali radiallahu ta'ala and they remain behind in Mecca Al-Mukarrama until eventually we know that the Quraysh they gathered, they plotted and they planned Allah Musta'an to do what? To assassinate the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and thus in their plotting and their planning when they did this then the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was given the permission by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to migrate to migrate to Medina al-Munawwara ya abdullah ya amat allah we know his journey his journey who did he choose he chose abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala to be his companion on this journey idh yaqulu li sahibihi la tahzan inna allah ma'ana when they were in the cave and Abu Bakr was very, very concerned. He was very, very sad. He was grieving. Oh, what's going to happen? They're going to see us, the enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you say to your companion, do not grieve. Rather, Allah is with us. Do not be sad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. And what that ends, that stage of the life of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the stage from the age of 40 when he was given prophethood, up to up to the time when he migrates to Medina Al-Munawwara Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah that was a total of 13 years in Mecca Al-Mukarrama after prophethood so what's the age of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now? well 40 years until he was the Prophet 
and then 13 years now doing da'wah. So he's at the age of like 53, walhamdulillah. And now he migrates to Medina al-Munawwara. Bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, we then begin year by year, month by month, discussing the life of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in, in Medina al-Munawwara. Brothers and sisters, remember, when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in Mecca al-Mukarramah, they were technically the underdogs. They were the ones who were being oppressed. They were the ones who had to hide the Iman and Islam for many years. But now in Medina al munawwara the tides have turned. And the Muslims, they have a state. And now, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, we find that even in terms of fiqh jurisprudence, there's a whole different change. Change from what it was in Mecca al mukarramah to what it's now in Medina al munawwara Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we begin the discussion the year one after the hijrah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The month of Rabi al-Awwal, that's when the hijrah occurred. Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrives in Medina al-Munawwara and he's camped at the area of Masjid Quba. And there the Masjid was built and Salatul Jumu'ah was prayed there. This was the first Jumu'ah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led in where? In Medina al-Munawwara. We know that Mus'ab ibn Umair, he had prayed Jum'ah Salah with the people of Medina al-Munawwara before the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa arrived. But the first Jumu'ah led by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was here at Quba during the Hijrah journey before he entered into the city of Medina proper. Brothers and sisters, this tells us that there was no Jumu'ah Salah in, in Mecca al-Mukarramah. Jumu'ah Salah began in Medina al-Munawwara and led by Mus'ab ibn Umair. And here when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes at the area of Quba, he prays it, he leads it, walhamdulillah. And he gave the khutbah, walhamdulillah. Then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam settles in the house of who? The house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. This is all occurring when? This is all occurring in the month of Rabi al-Awwal in the year one after Hijrah. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari is the host, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the guest. Soon after this, the masjid is established there in Medina al-Munawwara. Abdullah ibn as-Salam, he embraces al-Islam and he said, when I looked at the face of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I realized that he was not and he did not have the face of a liar. You could just see that this man was truthful. He was a trustworthy individual. Zayd radiallahu ta'ala an, he was then sent to bring the family of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Rafi' the same. Because remember, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's family was still there in Mecca al-Mukarramah. Aisha radiallahu anha, Sauda radiallahu ta'ala anha, Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha and the rest of the family members, they were there in Mecca al-Mukarramah. It was Abu Bakr and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who migrated together. Thus, Zayd radiallahu an, Abu Rafi', they were the ones tasked with the responsibility of bringing the family of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Medina al-Munawwara. That was the month of Rabi' al-Awwal. We move on and we're still discussing, subhanAllah, the year one after Hijrah. The month of Rabi' al-Thani. That's when Salah, the number of rakahs was increased to four. For Salat al-Zuhr, for Salat al-Asr, for Salat al-Isha. Before this, we know that Salah was an obligation the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had already gone on the Isra and the Miraj as we discussed previously. But Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, Salah was only in two rak'ahs. But now it's now increased to four rak'ahs, Dhuhr, Asr and Salatul Isha. Walhamdulillah. This occurred when? In the month of Rabi al-Thani, in the first year after the Hijrah. And then we also had the birth of the first kid of the Ansar and the first child of the Muhajireen. The first child from amongst the Muhajireen was born in this month, and who was this? Abdullah ibn Az Zubair. And the first kid from amongst the Ansar was also born in Rabi al Thani, and who was that? Nu'man ibn al Bashir. Nu'man ibn al Bashir. So these two kids born in the month of Rabi al Thani. What else occurred in this month? The Adhan was established in this month, the year one after Hijrah. And the month of Rabi Athani, the first Adhan was given. We know the dream of that individual. Certain week reports that Umar also saw a dream, subhanAllah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, who was chosen as the Mu'adhin? 
none other than Bilal radiallahu ta'ala an. It was also in this month that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam enacted certain treaties with the Yahud, with the Yahud of Medina al munawwara Certain alliances, certain pacts and treaties were signed between the Muslims and the Yahud. Walhamdulillah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, we take a short break. When we return, we continue our discussion the first year after Hijrah and we move on to the next month. We've dealt with Rabi al Awwal and Rabi al Thani. Walhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Be just and truthful. Be righteous and sincere. Be generous and forgiving. Whatever the Prophet gave you, take it. Take it. Gabriel al Romani. What he forbade you, then abstain from it. This is the choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asif Salim. He has defined him to be a role model for us. Islam is a complete way of life. Way of life. Ismail Bullock. You can do many things with the right intention, they become worship. Consistently be thankful to Allah and beseech his help in prayer. As the Prophet has described how he used to cry in the prayer, how he used to feel in the prayer. Every person would be asked about the salah on the Yom Al-Qiyamah. Our, our culture should be. Culture should be. Learn how to please Allah in a time to please Allah tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 3.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik tonight at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Pearls of Prophet Muhammad Peace be upon him. Abdullah ibn Amr, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, said to me, A Muslim is the one who avoids harming Muslims with his tongue and hands, and a Muhajir is the one who gives up all what Allah has forbidden. Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 1, Book of Faith, Hadith number 15. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. Ya ikhwan wal akhawat, before the break, what did we discuss? We discussed the first year after the hijrah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We saw that in the month of Rabi al awwal, the hijrah occurred. First Salatul Jumu'ah led by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was prayed at the area around Quba. The Masjid Al-Nabawi, the foundations for it were laid in Rabi Al-Awwal. We saw in Rabi Al-Thani, Salah, the number of rak'ahs for Zuhr, Asr and Isha was increased to four rak'ahs. The first Adhan was given in that month by who? By Bilal radiallahu ta'ala an. We move on to another important incident in this year and that was in the month of Dhul Qa'da. What occurred in the month of Dhul Qa'da? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam enacted the brotherhood between the Muhajireen and the Ansar. So one Muhajir, one Ansar, they were linked up together. And each one had a partner, walhamdulillah. And thus, the Ansar are called the Ansar because they were the helpers. They have the Muhajireen brothers. So we discussed the month of Rabi' al-Awwal, the month of Rabi' al-Thani, and the month of Dhul Qa'da, those were important matters which occurred in the year one after the hijrah of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam.
As for before the Hijrah, we discussed one year the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during Hajj, he meets up with these six individuals from Medina al munawwara The following year, he meets up with 12. The following year, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meets up with 70, and thus the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated. We spoke about year one, now we move on to year two after the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Between the months of Safar and Rajab, there were many, many expeditions that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent out. Between, for example, Rajab and Shaban, we had what? We had the changing of the direction of the Qibla. All of these years, what were the Muslims doing? In Mecca al mukarramah they faced towards the Kaaba. Very simple, very easy. When they reached Medina al munawwara what did they do? They were unable to. They were unable to face towards the Kaaba and Jerusalem. In Mecca, it was easy. Put the Kaaba in front of you, and you can still face Masjid al-Aqsa. But in Medina, it was difficult, unable. Mecca is one direction, Aqsa is in another direction. And so the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was hoping, was waiting that maybe the Qibla would be changed to Mecca al mukarrama And this occurred in the year two after the Hijrah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam between the months of either Rajab or Sha'ban. So this was also the first example of abrogation in our Sharia. This was a rule and it was abrogated. Facing towards Masjid al-Aqsa was the Qibla, and this was now abrogated. The first example of abrogation ever in our Sharia. And we know that this was even a fitna for some Muslims. You know what's going on? How is the rules changing? And some of the mushrikeen, they also made fun with regards to this matter. One day you this way, one day you that way. What is going on in your religion? They made fun. Allahumma sta'an. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, in the month of Shaban, the order with regards to fasting the month of Ramadan had come down. The month of Shaban and then comes, then comes the month of Ramadan. And so that was the first Ramadan that they fasted it and they fasted it as a fard fast. They fasted it as an obligation. So the month before it in the month of Shaban, the verses related to fasting Ramadan were revealed. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, we move on to that Ramadan in the year 2 AH. We all know the great incident, the 17th of Ramadan, subhanAllah, the year 2 AH. What happens? The battle of Badr, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah. This great battle, Yom Al Furqan, the day of criterion, the day which divided between Haq and Batil, occurred in this month, the month of Ramadan. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, we know that the Muslims were victorious in this battle. They faced a large army of the enemy, but they were successful, walhamdulillah. After gaining this victory, the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returns where? Returns to Medina al munawwara and he gets the news that his daughter, Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, had passed away. Allahumma sta'an. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, we know that every single one of the family members, the children, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, every one of them passed away in his lifetime except Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. And here we know that before Ruqayya, who had passed away? Abdullah the young boy had passed away. Qasim the young boy had passed away. And this is the first of the daughters to also pass away. You get the great victory at Badr and then you come home and you get the news that your daughter has passed away. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. To Allah we belong and to him we return. We are discussing the second year after the hijrah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In this year, Zakatul Fitr was also legislated and the matter of Nisab with regards to normal Zakat was instituted. That before this you want to give Sadaqah, MashaAllah, you gave Sadaqah, even Zakat you gave, Alhamdulillah. But there was no Nisab, there was no minimum amount that you needed to have so that you are now Zakatable. This was sent down, this was revealed, these regulations came down in the second year after the Hijrah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And after this Ramadan, on the day of Eid, this was the first time that they prayed in the large gathering of the Musalla. Not in the Masjid, but rather they prayed outside in public at the Musalla, Walhamdulillah. After the Battle of Badr, by about a month, we had the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Which daughter? Zainab. Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was in Mecca al mukarrama Her husband was not a Muslim. He fought against the Muslims in the Battle of Badr. He was captured and later on he was ransomed. 
part and parcel of the conditions was that he needs to allow Zainab, the daughter of the Prophet وسلم, to migrate to Medina al munawwara And so about a month after the Battle of Badr, Zainab anha, she comes to Medina al munawwara Walhamdulillah. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, she also suffered. We know that on her journey, one of the criminals, he tried to stop her and she fell off the camel. She was pregnant at the time and that she also fell ill later on, she passed away. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, we also had the marriage of Ali radiallahu ta'ala an to Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. After the battle of Badr, by around one month, Ali proposed for Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha and the proposal was accepted and he married her. A marriage of khair and barakah. It eventually led to who? It eventually led to Hassan being born, Hussein being born, Um Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha being born. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah. These are some of the events which occurred in the year 2 AH. What else occurred in the year 2 AH? Well, in the month of Shawwal, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam dealt with the treacherous tribe of Banu Qaynuqa and they were kicked out, they were forced out from their homes, they were forced into exile. The tribe of Banu Qaynuqa was expelled, walhamdulillah. Then in the month of Dhul Hijjah, we found that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam we know Dhul Hijjah, the days of Eid, the second Eid, Eid al-Adha. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam slaughters two sheep, one on behalf of himself and the family, and one on behalf of the Ummah, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, that was what? That was the second year after the Hijrah, walhamdulillah. We said that in this year, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam first slaughtered this Udhiya. In this year, Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha comes to Medina al munawwara In this year, Ali gets married to Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. In this year, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gets the great victory, the great victory after the battle of Badr, that the Muslims were victorious, walhamdulillah, who was killed. Abu Jahl was killed. Umayyah ibn Khalaf was killed. Uqba ibn Abi Mu'eet was killed. These criminals of the first order, Utbah. Ibn Rabi'ah was also killed. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah. After the Battle of Badr, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stands over those corpses of the enemies. And what did he say? He said that, Have you found the promise of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to be true? Verily, I have found the promise of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to be true. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah. Umar says, Ya Rasulullah, corpse, they can't hear you. How can they hear? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, they hear me now just as you hear. Just as you hear, subhanAllah. A miracle of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The same Battle of Badr, that's why this whole year is called the year of the Battle of Badr. This year, the year 2 AH, is called the year of the Battle of Badr. Yom Al Furqan, this mighty battle which occurred. The Muslims were only plus minus 300 and something. They faced an army of about 8,000. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah. We know that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, maybe Allah looked at the people who fought in the Battle of Badr and said, do as you wish, do as you wish. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has forgiven you. Why? Because of the great sacrifice. Some of them faced, many of them in reality, faced their own family members. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam faced his uncle, Al-Abbas, fought on the side of the disbelievers. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an's eldest son by the name of Abdul Rahman, he fought on the side of the enemy too. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah. We know that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, he did not participate in this battle. Why? We know that during his caliphate, people picked on him. They made it an issue. Ah, Uthman was not there at Badr. Why was he not there? Because he was looking after the daughter of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina al munawwara He was nursing, looking after Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha. So this was the year 2 AH and these were but only a few important events which occurred in that year. We spoke about the year 1 AH, walhamdulillah. We said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated. We said that the first Jumu'ah salah was prayed in that year. We said that the foundations of Masjid al-Nabawi we established. We said that salah was increased from two rakahs to four rakahs with regards to our four unit prayers, walhamdulillah. Family of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also arrived in Medina Al-Munawwara. The first of the Ansari kids was who? 
Nu'man ibn Mashir, born in the month of Rabi al-Thani. And the first of the Muhajireen kid was Abdullah ibn al-Zubair, walhamdulillah. Ya Abdullah, ya Amatullah, and with that we come to the end of this episode. We've been discussing the prophetic timeline, the life of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but through a different method, and that is year by year analysis, year by year insight, insha'Allah. I thank you all. Jazakumullahu khairan. Until we meet again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah, Allah, you are my Lord.